Hello, hope you're well. In this week's video, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. I'm gonna shoot one image with every single lens that's in my kit bag with me today here in this derelict mansion in Turkey. And I'm gonna give myself a time limit. Let's do this. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is James Kerwin, and this is me. I'm an architecture and interior photographer from the UK, and I love shooting abandoned places, relics, ruins, hidden gems, and ghost towns, as well as off the beaten path locations all around the world. I'm posting new videos every Sunday, so why don't you join me for the ride by subscribing. You can also check out my website in the description below. Okay, so I've got a selection of lenses with me. All of my lenses actually that I own currently are with me in my bag. I'm gonna show you them in a second. One shot, every single lens. Yeah, that should be enough. Every single shot should be different. Every single shot should be something creative and all with a different focal length. Let's do it, shall we? Okay, this is my selection. I'll talk you through each of these lenses one by one. Let's start with the obvious lenses, the tilt shifts. The 17mm TSC by Canon is a must in any commercial photographer's architectural toolkit. However, this manual focus lens takes a little mastering, but it can get you out of some tight situations. I've owned this lens for about six years now. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, the first one, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I didn't say anything that I can't cheat. Get, save myself a little bit of time. I've created a shot here before. Some of you may have seen it on my Instagram account, uh, which is the handles here. Uh, if uh, I take a shot here, there's some light coming in. I came here at this time of day on purpose. The light's blasting in through that window there, little speckles on the floor. Looks a little bit ugly, but to make it more interesting, if I kick up some dust, that should hopefully give us light rays, and I'm gonna shoot it with my 17 mil tilt shift lens, get a little bit of that ceiling in, a little bit of width, the shot. Let's do it. First things first, what I've done then is I've actually decided to position myself here. Uh, I've pulled myself back as far as I can. I want to incorporate a little bit of the ceiling. Uh, also as well, there is a little bit of lens flare coming on the right hand side. I've got a video coming up about lens flare. Keep an eye out on the channel for that. Uh, also, uh, let me have a little look here. The lineup is not particularly easy. I remember last time when I shot this, it was always a bit awkward. I'm going to just drop my lens a little bit. I've lifted it probably, uh, I don't know, maybe yeah, a couple of notches on the tilt shift, pretty much straight on. I'm gonna just line that up. I've just got to come a little bit more right. The star on the ceiling is the, is the, the showstopper here, so I need to include that. Yep, I'm gonna drop the lens a little bit further. That's pretty much me. I'm quite, I'm quite happy with that. First thing, next thing I'm gonna do is focus. And I'm gonna focus a third of the way into the scene. say about that it's pretty nifty isn't it come back a little bit further and the reason why is because I've lined everything up but my wall on the right is not so nice uh, and I want to make sure the right rays are the focus point of this entire image we're losing the light we're losing it let's kick up a bit more see this shot's already taking ages I'm gonna do 15 minutes never gonna happen I'm gonna overrun obviously 15 minutes, <laughs> not gonna happen. Okay, the idea here is that we capture the rays at their best, so we need to wait for the right light just to settle down a little bit. Done that, and we shoot it. We can go a little bit underexposed if we need to. Try another one a little bit brighter. Check them. I've got some rays. I'm gonna drop the lens a little bit more. I'm still F8 different shutter speeds. I'm just trying to get the rays as best as I possibly can. So I've done ISO 400 on the basis that I want a fast shutter speed as quick as possible. I don't want the shutter dragging because the, everything's blowing out the window basically. Yeah, I've done that shot. Let's move on. Of course, in shot number one, the rays are the focus point, the main draw if you will. This is a technique I've done on plenty of occasions and it works occasionally to create drama, movement, and a bit of wow factor to any interior shot. But it must be said that this can only really be done in personal work. In commercial work, you can't really get away with giving your clients light rays in an image. My editing here was fairly minimal, some shadow boosts, and I pulled some of the tones out in the saturation of the scene. A decent first shot attempt. 
Moving on to the 24mm TSE then. Also an f4 lens, this is a somehow sharper yet narrower brother of the 17mm. This lens can help if you need to compress a scene or if you're worried about stretching an image too much. This is the Mark II version, my second copy of this lens and I've owned it for around 18 months. For this shot I decided to head into the ornate white room just behind where we were. This would lend itself well to this narrower focal length of 24mm. Uh, got my 24mm on the front, as I said. I use the adapter, by the way, for the 24mm and the 17mm, the uh, RF to EF adapter. You know the one. You know the one. They work perfectly. Uh, I'm just lining up a shot here. Um, how's it working out for me? Well, at the moment, not so great. Uh, I'm just trying to get things like lined. So I'm going to shoot this. What I'm going to do. Uh, so I basically position my camera, I'm kind of happy. What I'm going to create is a panoramic, which is not really cheating, let's be honest. It's top, middle and bottom, stitch them together. It's what these lenses are good at, uh, in, in architecture anyway. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do it as simple as possible. So what I mean by that is, first of all, uh, guess what I've just realised? I shot the last uh, image on medium-sized JPEG, not raw. Just changed that. <laughs> I was shooting an island the other day and I completely forgot. I was just doing handheld snaps. I wanted to upload them to my Instagram stories and uh, I must have messed up. Put it through that and now I forgot to put it back. However, that other image will be fine. It's fine for, Insta uh, fine for YouTube, but we've already created it before. So let's just do this. First of all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna activate bracketing. Next thing I'm gonna activate, two second timer. We need to put that on because that stops and eliminates any camera shake. Uh, my bracket in now is, so I'm f7.1, ISO 400. I'm gonna shoot that. It's one tenth of a second. And then I've got a one stop over. I've got one that's uh, one stop under. And then three stops under, but that should be fine. Just gonna quickly check those. Absolutely fine. I'm gonna move the lens to the top. Uh, let's check out what we're doing. We don't touch the exposure at all when we shift the lens. We never do uh, because uh, the camera's getting tricked a little bit in terms of lighting. We do check our focus in though, and it's fine. I'm still focused a third of the way in. And then finally, I'm gonna roll the lens to the bottom. I'm gonna check my focus in again, which is off by quite some distance. So I'm gonna refocus that, leave my settings alone. Shoot, guess what? We're done, two shots down. Now it's gonna get more complicated. So here is the second shot, a panoramic of the white tiled room, as mentioned. This was cropped a little in post-production. Um, a panoramic with this lens makes a 6x4 ratio image, or a 4x6 in this case, or in this orientation. And I cropped it to 4x5 and eliminated some of the skylight a little bit. I found that element to be a little bit distracting. When we crop this down, it looks quite nice overall, and I'm pleased with the, considering the time I had with the result here. So the third lens then is the Canon RF 15-35 2.8, a super sharp and of course wide lens if a little limited on the height say compared to the reach of the previous two lenses. It's a heavy piece of kit, uh, the lens is only one of two RF lenses that I own and I've owned it since July 21. I moved back to the previous room for this lens with a special shot in mind. Oh what have I got now? I'll tell you what I've got, I've got my 15-35 on here, my uh, RF version so 2.8 one, I'm gonna literally get this ready to shoot the ceiling that's above my head. I'm back in the same room we started in. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this on the other way round to normal. So usually it's on this way round. I'm actually gonna flip my tripod over completely and that allows me to put my gear head in a completely different position. Uh, what position does it allow? Well, it allows this position. I'm gonna be able to flick this out, rotate this down, and that's gonna allow me to get a shot of the ceiling because I'm going to be able to put my camera upwards. That's pretty important. Okay, so I'm pretty much in position. What I've done here is I've got my camera level. I'm checking all the angles. So I'm just making sure that's level. It is. I've got the lovely star on the ceiling. I'm going to focus on that. I'm just going to change my exposure. I'm also going to do three brackets. Uh, yep, not like that. <laughs> I'm going to put my two second timer on is what I was going to say first of all. Two second timers on and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change my 
uh, my brackets. So that's my two second timer. I'm also just changing my brackets. So they're on three brackets just so that I've got them. I don't really probably need them, but I'm, I'm not, I can't see much of my screen. That's the first thing to bear in mind. Okay, so that's done. I've lined it up quite nicely. It's not like 100% perfect, the lineup, um, but considering the time and everything like that and how long I've taken, it's a pretty good job. Um, the geared head really helps you to get this in position, of course. I'm just retaking that just to make sure I've got it. Three brackets, two second timers on, just as before. Nice decay, nice light. Done. Let's move on to the next lens. Ceilings are always incredibly difficult to shoot, mainly because people focus too much on their LCD and they don't take a step back and get their tripod in position properly. But with a combination of in-camera and post-processing techniques, the tools and using tools such as like the crop overlays, etc., I've found that I can achieve nice results. What do you think of this one? Leave your comments in the section below. Let me know what you think. Okay, so we're getting tighter now. This is my Canon 50mm f1.8. Of course, also for the RF mount, I bought this mainly to grab video clips for this channel and use it for occasional selfies, and it's certainly not meant as a main interior lens. I bought it back in August 2021, but could I get something usable in this tight space? Let's see. I've got my 50 on then. Um, I spotted some nice light earlier uh, here on this radio. It doesn't line up very well. I'm trying to shoot it. Um, but basically, I like the way that the light's bouncing around and falling off of the, the radiator below. There's a nice tree with a nice pattern on the wall, and uh, it's going to look quite cool. My geared head is a little bit, needs repairing, so it's coming loose. Uh, and I'm going to try and position myself so I'm straight, which I am. I'm gonna, I probably need to come back as far as I can. And it's not lining up so straight, which is frustrating. And what I mean by that is uh, the radiator doesn't exactly line up with the tiles on the wall. So I'm going to have to trick, trick the camera a little bit into believing it is by the, being in the right position. It might need a repositioning. I mean, I've lowered the tripod, uh, the camera's position. Yeah, it's quite nice. I might just make the exposure a little bit darker because, to be honest, it's the light that I like on the radiator itself. Let's check that one. Yeah, this is the one that I like. I'm going to go for that one. So basically what it is, is there's some nice patterns. You'll see them now on the radiator. The light's falling really nicely on the, on the, on the radiator, and that's what I like. So I'm going to try and go for that. We've got one more lens to do, haven't we? I love the shadows and the shapes in this photo. And although I'm using the same room yet again, I think it's valid. 50mm is a lens that I've only ever really used back in the day when I shot kitchen detail shots commercially for a kitchen firm back in Norfolk. Taps and such like, you know, hobs and knobs. But this works well. Maybe I'll create some more detailed type shots in the future. Let's see. Next up is my final lens, the 85mm f1.8. It's ancient. I bought it back in, I think, 2012 when I was shooting weddings, and I've kept it ever since. It's useful, actually, for, well, portraits, and definitely not architecture, of course. And it's the longest lens that I currently own. What would I capture here? Anything? Anything at all? Next one, 85mm. I need the adapter for that one as well. Let's get it on. I've got to go for a detail shot. There's only one detail shot, or maybe potentially two that I could do here. 85 is quite a long focal length, so it's going to be difficult. Let's try it. Detail is the only way. Okay, I've stepped outside. Still quite zoomed in 85mm. It's not something that I'm used to, but I do have one idea, and that is that there's some nice ceiling pattern just here, and I would like to photograph that. I'm going to do it handheld. I might lie down. What about that? However, I do have a photograph, so that's a bonus. Let's try and line this up as best I can. Handheld. F, mm, to be honest with you, because it's handheld and I'm getting older, uh, my shake is real. I'm going to boost my ISO to 400 so that my camera shake is minimal. I'm going to do F3.2 because, same reason. I need to take my two second timer off. That's really quite dumb. Let's 
get that off. Continuous high speed, back on the live view. I would like to photograph that one. Hey, do you know what is cool? I've done it. I've actually done it. With the 85mm, I've got a shot that I like of the ceiling above, like the outside of the mansion. Pretty nice one. I'm going to edit that up. I'm going to pop them all on the screen. The final shot, something a little bit different. Looking up at the details of the roof here with some more time, perhaps I could have come out with something better, but all in all, I'm pretty happy with how this all came out. This image is a little soft at full resolution, but the lens is pretty old. In fact, it's super old by this point. Overall, I like most of the results here in the video, and here are a few more shots that I captured of the interior spaces during my two visits to this place during this year. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any comments, please leave them below. Something a little bit different. We've tried all the lenses in my, in my arsenal. Okay, until next time, hit the bell notification. You'll be alerted when I upload a video. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I'm off to get some water and no beer because I'm doing 30 days without any alcohol. Yeah, that's challenging in Istanbul. But anyway, we're going to give it a go. Until next time, bye for now.